Hello, it's Jeff Roscoe here with the PIDP 3240 Media Enhanced Learning Project. This is a video presentation. I'm doing this on the introduction to air conditioning. All right, so air conditioning in an automobile is a closed system. We use a refrigerant, which is similar to propane in its characteristics that at a low temperature, it's in a liquid form, but anything past minus 26 centigrade, it wants to be in a vapor form. And that's what we're utilizing this process. Um, so we have a, a little bit of refrigerant in the system. This is going to explain that the red lines are high temperature, high pressure vapor. When we get a dotted line, it'll be a cooled, compressed liquid, but still high pressure. When we go to a blue line, it'll be a cold liquid and a vapor, kind of like soda pop. It's, uh, it's mostly liquid, but there's a lot of bubbles in it. It's, uh, and it's a low pressure. And then of course, the dotted line will be a cold vapor, low pressure. So the refrigerant goes into the compressor as a vapor because you can't compress the liquid, Pascal's law. This is a picture of a standard automotive air conditioning compressor. It is belt driven, clutch controlled, and made to operate between 80 and 200 PSI. So now let's talk about how the air conditioning system works. We take a vapor, we compress it in the compressor to make it hot. We send the hot vapor up front to the condenser right by your radiator so the fan can blow on it. The hot vapor now has cooling effect on it and it goes between a hot vapor to a, a cooler vapor. It still has some heat to it but it's much cooler. We've taken some energy away from it. This is a condenser. Its primary function is to apply cooling to the high pressure vapor and force it to condense into a liquid. We then bring it through a filter, otherwise known as a receiver dryer, where there's something here called desiccant, the silica gel that you get when you buy electronics. It keeps the moisture away, so any moisture that manages to sneak into the system gets absorbed here. This is a picture of a standard receiver dryer. It just contains a bag of desiccant. It's not usually serviceable. If the desiccant for some reason can't be rejuvenated, then you have to replace this component. This is a picture of the silica gel, the little beads, the desiccant that's inside the receiver dryer. It's the same stuff from electronics. All it does is absorbs moisture. It keeps the system from rusting or corroding. This liquid then moves up into the metering device. This is an early metering device. It's called an orifice tube. Like the name implies, it has a regulated orifice size that meters the refrigerant through it. This is another example of a metering device called an expansion valve or an H block. It controls not only the refrigerant entering the evaporator, but also controls the refrigerant from the evaporator to the compressor again. It just allows for a higher state of control. There's various, various versions of it out there, but they want to meter it so that through the metering device, we've taken away this pressure because we slowed it down. And now a nice, cool, bubbly liquid, uh, kind of like soda pop. So it's coming through here. It goes into the evaporator. Here's a picture of an evaporator. Again, much like a small radiator or a condenser, it's just there to transfer heat. In this case, we're gonna transfer heat from the refrigerant to the cabin by taking the cabin's heat to make the refrigerant do what it wants to do at this point in time, which is to boil. At the evaporator, we use the terminology latent heat. So from the evaporator, this liquid vapor soda pop product goes through and it steals the heat from the cabin air that the blower motor is moving around. It steals that heat. So the air feels cold, but in actual fact, it's the same air, but we've taken all the heat energy away. And that energy, we've, the liquid has used to boil, and then it comes out the other side as a cold vapor, low pressure. 
So this is just a vapor coming out because we let it boil because we're over 26 degrees centigrade and it wants to boil. This refrigerant then goes back to the metering device and is slowly given back to the compressor as a vapor only. And the process starts over again. 